Hey everyone, welcome to Easy Nursing, the channel that's dedicated to bringing you NCLEX reviews, general nursing tips, and practice question videos. Today we're going to be talking about how to start an IV. Now, I know when I was in nursing school, starting an IV was the one thing throughout the entire program I always worried about because it was just, it was the pinnacle of being a nurse. You feel like to be a nurse, you have to be able to start an IV, you have to be able to do it. I can tell you now, uh, it gets easier over time, but the other big thing to tell yourself is anybody can go in and pierce some skin and start an IV. A nurse is a lot more than just being able to do that one particular skill. There's a lot more knowledge that goes behind it than just starting an IV. So if you're still having difficulties, uh, when you finish nursing school, you still have plenty and plenty of time to learn how to start an IV. Me and myself, I learned uh, the majority of my IV starting tips after I graduated and actually got in the field. But let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you want to do when it comes to starting IV after you've got the doctor's orders and you verified everything is go ahead and select an extremity. Now I want to show you some reasons you might want to avoid a particular arm. Uh, you can see if a patient is a dialysis patient and they have a dialysis site, you want to avoid this arm entirely because you don't want to accidentally cause damage to any of the dialysis site itself. If the patient's arm has uh, some sort of a wound or burns or some cellulitis or a blood clot you want to avoid that arm completely some other things if a patient has a mastectomy um, you want to ask the patient hey have you have a doctor ever told you to avoid a particular arm and if they have had a mastectomy and they're supposed to avoid an arm just just do that and just focus on the arm that you do have another thing is you always ask the patient if they have a preference if the patient is left-handed or right-handed uh, this can always make a difference because if, it, if they're right-handed, you don't really want that dominant arm because it's going to be moving around more and it's at increased risk for being positional, meaning if it bends weird, the IV pump's going to start going off at you, or just getting messed up from them doing their daily things and getting it ripped out on accident. So once you've decided which arm you want to use, uh, we'll go ahead and apply a tourniquet. Now uh, I see this tourniquet they applied in the forearm. I typically always apply my tourniquets just above the AC because that will allow me to plump up the ACs, the main forearm veins, and the hand. So that way I have a, my pick to go anywhere I want. And I apply the tourniquet before I start actually looking for veins because it will help to plump up some veins and maybe make them easier to see and better to palpate. You want it to be to where you can see how the vein's gonna be when you're actually gonna be inserting it. So you wanna see how it is when it's plumped up with the tourniquet. Now selecting a vein. So you got your tourniquet on up here above the AC and you're looking at the veins. Now when there's two things you can do. You can visually inspect and you can palpate. Now I have another video. It's quite a long video but it covers everything you want to do when it comes to picking the perfect vein. But just briefly I want to point out some things in these two arms to watch out for. So I don't like, I work in med surge, I don't like using AC veins, anything in here just because the patient's going to have the IV for several days and every time they bend their elbow to scratch their nose it's going to become positional if they're getting continuous fluids. So I try to avoid anywhere in the AC as well as the forearm and the hand. So I normally, like these pictures show, I go for these main forearm veins. So when I'm visually inspecting I want to make sure that they're nice and straight and you can see these ones here are nice and straight. And some things that I want to watch out for here are these um, bifurcations. Now, different people have uh, valves in different places in their veins. All veins have valves. But typically, right here at the bifurcations, you want to avoid crossing through. So if I'm going to start an IV, I'm not going to start uh, anywhere immediately before the bifurcation. You can tell from the way this is looking that the person's hand is up here. And here's their AC. So you'll be going this way. I would not want to start anywhere in this realm because my IV is going to hit the bifurcation. So anywhere in here is good for starting IV, anywhere in here, probably avoid anywhere around this bifurcation. So you could probably start it here and you can go up to here and it's not going to be a problem because it's going to be in between them. But you want to just watch for these bifurcations, typically start just above them. So you could start here, any of this would be good. Same story goes for here, you can see the bifurcation right here. Uh, looks like there may be one here, definitely one right here. Here's a bifurcation. You want to avoid these sites, so I could definitely start an IV 
any of these straight spots because you want it to be nice and straight when it goes in. All right, so you decided which vein you want to go for. Let's prepare our equipment. So let's real quick talk about IV sizes. Now looking at these colors, these are the same colors in my facility. They may differ from yours. Yellows are going to be our 24 gauge. This is the tiny baby. Okay, this is um, worst case scenario. You got 22s, which are uh, my personal favorite. You have 20s, and then you have 18s. Now, if a patient is in the ER or you're going to surgery or you're going to need a blood transfusion, you definitely want to aim for these larger size IVs. If you're unable to get these, and then sometimes it's nice just to have them because if you're going to start an IV and you can get one of these easily, go for it because worst case scenario, in an emergency, you have it already. If you just can't get it, uh, I've seen 22s used for blood transfusions in non-emergent situations if that's all we can get. And 24s are just worst case scenario. So uh, why would you pick one size over another? Just look at the size of the veins in the patient and also the length. Remember I told you there's this bifurcations. If you don't have much room in between and the patient has lots of squiggles and bifurcations, and this may be the only good spot, you may only be able to squeeze a 24 in there. Um, or 22 and so you can be limited by how veiny uh, and how twisted the veins are in the patient so other uh, things you'll see in your kit you got a saline flush you're going to hook this up to the tubing that you're going to connect actually to the catheter itself you can see someone here has their IV and their kit now what comes in this kit you have what's called a tegaderm this is just a clear transparent uh, dressing some tape to help reinforce it, your tourniquet, and some stuff to clean, alcohol in case you make a little bit of a mess with the blood. All right, so we got our equipment ready. Basically, all you gotta do is open some things up and hook your flush, get the bubbles out and hook it up to your tubing, and you're ready to roll. Okay, so we re-tourniquet the patient, and we wanna go ahead and clean the site. So we'll use the, the cleaner that's included in the kit, uh, and basically just rub back and forth. I'm also going to keep a couple of these handy. Uh, these are just the alcohol wipes because if I'm messing with the arm and working with it and I accidentally touch it, I want to be able to just real quick clean it off. And also when you clean, sometimes it helps the skin to become more translucent and the cold causes it to shrink and causes the blood vessel to kind of plump up a little bit so you can see it better. So if you're having trouble, you saw it when you cleaned it and it kind of disappears, just rub across it again and clean it again and sometimes the vein is going to pop right back out and see, you'll be able to see it again. Now this is important, especially with elderly patients or I do this with any patient. You want to hold the skin taut. Now typically you can just do this with your hands, holding it like you're holding a burrito and just keep the skin nice and tight, especially uh, if here's the AC and here's the hand. You want also definitely a lot of tightness being pulled this direction if your IV is starting right here. And what that's going to do is it's going to keep the skin tight when you go to poke it so the vein doesn't roll. So keeping the skin nice and tight and stretching it out until it's smooth like this, especially on an old person, that's going to help you to see the vein better and hold the vein down so it doesn't roll on you. All right, so we got him clean, it's held, we're ready to insert the needle. So you want to do it at a slow degree, about 15 degrees. So you're coming in nice and shallow. And the reason being, if I was coming straight down, there's no, I'm just gonna poke through the vein. So you wanna come in at an angle, as low as you can, so you can just go straight into the vein. Now you're not gonna put the whole needle into the vein. You just need to spike the needle, spike the vein with the needle. So that's why it says insert until flashback. So right here, you can see, uh, here's the vein. And we're inserting the needle just until we get the flashback back here in the, in the IV. Um, device. So the moment the needle touches right there, the plastic catheter part isn't in the patient yet, it's just the needle. We'll take a zoom in in just a second. So let's take that zoom in. Here's the vein. You can see just the needle has touched the vein, the actual plastic catheter part, and you can see this here. So you got a plastic catheter, and then you got the needle right at the tip. See how much gap is between the catheter and the needle? So you need to, once you poke the vein, get the flashback. This is very important here. You just poked it. You need to go in just minutely. See that tiny little bit between the catheter and the needle? You need to poke just enough 
that just the tip of the catheter is in the vein. So you're going to insert the vein. Say, say this is how much you insert. You're in so, in far, this far into the patient's skin, and you just get your flashback. You want to pause there, take a deep breath, and go in just that much more. Just the tiniest bit more to get the catheter to go in, and you're not going to feel anything. You're not going to see anything. So you go in, you get flashback, stop, and then push it in just, it's about a millimeter. That's all it is. So look at a calculator if you don't know how big that is, just a millimeter. Once you're there, then you'll advance the catheter. Now when I say advance the catheter, you're not moving the needle anymore. So this is gonna be all stationary. At this point, you take your hands and pinch this pink part here and just slowly push it in. If it does not go in, this is the big thing, if it does not go in and it's fighting resistance, don't push too hard or you're gonna push the vein off of the needle. Instead, push just a little bit more with the, uh, with the needle, then try the catheter again. And just do this until you finally get the catheter all the way in. It should go in nice and smooth. How do you know if the needle's in too far? If it goes in too far, you're gonna see big bruising swelling around the arm. If that's the case, Next time you start an IV, put that little extra, push less. So to recap, you push, poke, poke the patient until you get blood return, push that tiny little bit more, and then push the catheter in. So now we're in all the way, and you can go ahead and retract the needle, and you just leave the catheter in. At this point, what you do, you pop the tourniquet, and you hold pressure. Now, if this is the catheter inside the patient, and here's the patient's skin, you got it all the way in, you don't hold pressure right here. You hold it where about you think that the catheter ends because you can't squeeze the tube shut. What you're doing, you're squeezing the vein right here. So, you got the needle in the patient, you advance your catheter. Now you're gonna wanna hold pressure right here where the catheter should probably stop. You can't see it because it's in the patient now. Pop your tourniquet and pull the needle out. And that's gonna keep the blood from coming out. Luckily, you got two pieces of gauze in your kit. What you do is you hook up your tubing now, being very careful that the IV doesn't pull out. You just draw back just a little bit of blood. You don't need nearly this. You just need enough blood that you see it right up the tubing, and that's it. Then you go ahead and flush the line. What are you washing for when you flush? When you flush the line, you're making sure it goes in nice and easy, and the patient doesn't report any pain and you see that the arm isn't swelling up like the fluid is going underneath the skin. If you see swelling underneath the skin, then your IV uh, is, is not a proper IV and you'll need to restart. But if you flush and it goes straight in super easy and the patient completes, uh, does not report any pain, then you're in the clear. At this point, you just need to dress the IV. Now, depending on your facility, they may want you to just put the pigoderm on and then tape on top or in nursing school sometimes they teach you to do this butterfly to tape the IV down and then apply this nice tegaderm to keep it all in place. One thing I always recommend, like it shows here though, is tape your tubing down so it's not just dangling underneath the patient getting stuck on things and pulling the IV out. At this point, you got it all taped off, it's good to go, and you did it, and all I can say is now you don't have to worry about IVs for the rest of your nursing career. Uh, practice makes perfect. And now all you gotta worry about is starting Foley's. Uh, but that'll come in a later video. So this is Easy Nursing. If you like my video, please uh, like and subscribe. If you have any more questions, comment below and I can always do a repeat video of maybe some just uh, general IV starting tips. Anyways, thank y'all.